Hello and welcome to another QImage Ultimate instructional video. In this video we're going to be talking about the printing options dialog. So we'll open that up now. At first this menu looks a little bit intimidating because there's a lot of things on it but there's really only a few areas that we need to talk about. First we're going to talk about interpolation. Interpolation is the method used to take the pixels in your original photo and resample them to a size that's compatible with your printer. As you can see up here where my mouse is. The Epson printer driver that I'm using, and most Epson drivers in fact, operate at a native resolution of 720 pixels per inch. So your original photo, whether you printed it 5 by 7, 8 by 10, or 30 by 20 inches is going to have a different amount of pixels than what's needed to fill the printer page. So we get from your original to the page by interpolating, that is creating the right number of pixels that will fit on the page. So under interpolation type you'll see a whole lot of different interpolations that are sorted from the most recent all the way back to a decade ago when interpolation was first starting to be used for digital photographs. There's really only two that I want to point you to. The, the sharpest, the most detailed is Fusion. That's the latest and greatest. And the only other one that I personally use is Vector. Vector is a very smooth, noise-free, fast interpolation method that's not quite as detailed as Fusion but it can be used in circumstances like when you're just printing a high number of small prints and you want to want them to print fast uh, this is the method to use vector but for general purpose for the most detail and the highest quality prints I would leave it on the default which is fusion over here we see an area called anti-aliasing for downsampling and when you first see this, you, you might ask, why would I ever downsample something? That sounds like it's going to degrade the print. Well, it kind of goes both ways here. If you have a photo over here that's 24 megapixels and you're only printing it at 3 by 2 for some wallets, then the print on the page is actually going to need less pixels than what are in your original. So you need to downsample. Why do you need to downsample? Well, without getting into a whole complicated description, the printer driver that we're using here has a native resolution of 720 ppi. And what that means is that the driver operates best if you hand it 720 pixels per inch. If you're off from that value, either higher or lower, let's say 655 ppi or 898 ppi. If you give it odd resolutions like that, then the driver has to resample again and get it to 720, which is a multiple of the final 2880 or 5760 dots per inch that it'll actually be placing on the page. So we want to get to 720 because that gets us to the sweet spot on the driver and sometimes we have to downsample. Sometimes there are more pixels than the in the original than are needed on the page and we downsample for that. Well anti-aliasing takes care of artifacts that might appear in let's say a brick walkway or a tile roof or shingles or finely spaced fence posts things like that with a repeating pattern where you might see artifacts that look like heat waves or ripples that are moving through those. Anti-aliasing takes care of those by getting rid of the artifacts. And we have a default of medium here. The only reason you might set it to low is if you're using some kind of specialized graphics that are not really photos like a screen print or things like that that you're printing out that you might want a little sharper print and you don't care so much about the artifacts that might arise from aliasing. High 
you might use a high amount of anti-aliasing if you're printing out some mathematical uh, graphics like concentric circles or things like that and you really don't want any artifacts at all in it. But for photographs we set it to medium. Down here this looks like a lot of options but it's really only two groups here. This is the interpolation level to use for normal prints and for posters that take up more than one page. So if you set this to maximum it's going to interpolate the pixels in your original photograph to this number up here, which is 720 ppi. That's where it's getting this from. So if you set it to maximum, then it'll interpolate all the way to the native ppi of your driver. If you set it to high, it's an uh, integer multiple of that. It'll go down to half and so forth. The default is maximum for normal prints and high for posters. Poster is a print that would take up more than one page, like a 2x2 two two or a 4x4 four four poster that you might print across multiple pages. High is the default for that because they're generally meant to be viewed for a great, from a greater distance. I leave mine on maximum because I don't have any restriction on time and I always want the maximum quality prints. Over here on Print Spooler we have some specialized options. Normally you want the top dot here which prints all pages at once and that just means it's gonna spool or process all pages one at a time all the way up through the end in one uh, job. Down here spool one page at a time that will spool one page or process one page send it to the driver and then stop and ask you when you're ready for the next page when you click and say that you're ready it'll print page two and so on you might do that if you have some kind of printer or a need to load one page at a time into your printer this spool with time delay can be useful if you have a network printer that has a job length or size restriction or you're printing to an old XP print spooler or something like that that may have a problem if you send too much data at once so you can actually set up a time delay between each page. The top dot here is, is what we want for most print jobs. The format here I want to talk about for a second because QImage Ultimate typically sends a lot more data to the driver than other programs. Now it does that in a smart way by tiling the photos across the page rather than just dumping each print uh, the whole image at once like other printing programs but even still you might have a network printer again that has a print spooler or Q size limit uh, you might be using an older machine that doesn't have quite as much memory as you'd like and you might notice when you print a large print particularly that you're missing sections of the print there are tiles in the print that are missing or it only prints up to a certain spot let's say halfway and then the rest of the page is blank. If you see that what it means is that your Windows operating system or your spooler or your printer driver is having trouble with the amount of memory needed to take on that print job. It's not a QImage Ultimate problem but it's a Windows spooler or a driver issue. To mitigate that the first place to go is right here on the spool format and change it to raw. And what that does is it tells Windows not to manipulate the data going to the driver. Just take the raw data and print it. That's the fastest method that requires the least amount of memory. This will solve a lot of problems right here if you're having issues with partial prints. The final print sharpening is the last thing that I want to talk about here. And the final print sharpening is a sophisticated algorithm but really all you as the end user needs to know is where to slide this slider to get the amount of sharpening that you want. Final print sharpening is designed to get your final prints to have the same amount of sharpness as the photo on screen when you view it on your screen at let's say a one-to-one -one zoom. So obviously different printers, different types of paper, will require a different amount of sharpening to get the same visual sharpness as you get on your screen. And this slider is 
meant to match those. It'll match your final print to the sharpness that you have on the screen. Once you get that final sharpness set by clicking OK here, you can go to File, Save, and save a printer setup for that type of paper. And the next time you load that, everything in here will be set as you had it set for that printer setup. We'll talk about that File, Save in the uh, Save dialog video. This final print sharpening, I would leave it on Deep Focus Sharpening, which is a halo-free, sophisticated algorithm that will really sharpen your prints without any artifacts. And the only thing that you need to do is leave this adjustment on Smart here. What Smart Sharpening means is that QImage Ultimate will look at the number of pixels, which is the resolution of your original, versus the print size. A 5x7 will need less and a smaller radius sharpening than a 30 by 20 print. It'll automatically take care of all that. All you need to do is set this slider here to the amount of sharpness that you like in your prints and then just leave it there for that printer setup or that paper. So hopefully this will help you get around this dialog here and use all of these options to your liking and to your needs. Thanks again for watching this QImage Ultimate instructional video.